This week we've been talking about a lot of different technologies, uh, artificial intelligence, big data, cloud computing, and you know, everybody, when they introduce a new technology, use this uh, same phrase, Hadoop is the Linux of big data, or TensorFlow is the Linux for machine learning, or Kubernetes is the Linux of the cloud. But you know what all those things have in common? They run on Linux. Uh, it turns out Linux is very, very important. Uh, we have Greg Crow Hartman here today. Uh, he is uh, a fellow at the Linux Foundation. He is a key kernel maintainer, maintains the long-term support kernel, uh, is a prolific developer, uh, and he's going to discuss an important issue today around cybersecurity and give a overview of the Spectre and Meltdown vulnerabilities and how they have been dealt with in the open source kernel community. Please welcome to the stage, Greg Crowhartman. Hi, um, I'm Greg. I got to use my title in icons. <laughs> um, turns out every major security problem these days gets a little logo. So of course, Spectra had its logo, Meltdown has a logo, and Linux has a logo. So I'm gonna go over how this all came to be what it is at a very high level. And I want to say at a very high level, because this is a very, very technical issue. Um, I'm going to be very general, very vague. Um, there are full notes for all the resources behind this. Um, there was a really good talk yesterday uh, in Chinese from a canonical develop kernel developer who also gave some good information about this. Um, see my notes, see his presentation, it's a good job. So let's try and do this on a very high level. So Spectra was announced in January of this year and Meltdown. And it was a big deal because of a number of different things. It was, um, this is really a hardware bug. This is a bug or an issue in hardware. And the goal of an operating system of a kernel is to make the bugs in hardware go away so you can't see them anymore. We deal that all, with that all the time on devices of the peripherals, that's a job of a hardware, of a kernel engineer. We work around hardware problems. This was unique in that the bug was in the CPU. CPUs normally do not have bugs. Um, the bug is that valid code, code that is written correctly, proper, and, cor and everything is good about it, can trick the CPU into doing bad things. So valid code that we write gets executed by a CPU to do bad things. It's something, it's a new type of security research. Uh, Jan Horn from Google found this last July. Uh, it took six months for it to come out publicly. Uh, two other researchers also found this at the same time because this is an active area of research. Um, and it exploits how CPUs work. Modern CPUs have to look into the future in order to go really fast. They have to guess what is going on in order to make your workload quicker. So they guess, and if they guess wrong, they can unwind time and go back and fix things up. But it's in that guessing wrong thing that the CPUs actually are affecting parts of the system that we never realized. Um, there's many, many different ways this is coming out. Uh, many different variants, they call them. I'll go through a number of them. Um, they all trick the CPU to do different things, and you can do it in different ways. That's why there's different variants. Um, and they're going to keep coming. We know it's been publicly said that there's like going to be at least eight or nine of these. Um, it's going to be a lot more coming over time. Um, this is just an area of research that's going to happen for a while. It's going to take the CPU vendors a long time to fix this because their pipelines are very large, four or five years. So it's going to be around for a while. So let's talk about the variants. So the first three, um, these are abbreviations. I'm, I'm going to go into them very roughly. The first three were announced back in January. Uh, the first two, I'll go through them uh, later. 3A and 4 were announced back in March. Um, number 5 was leaked a couple weeks ago, and the full details will come out today, actually, on this one, um, in today in the U.S. time zone. I thought I could talk more about it, but I realized I was off. Um, so these are the numbers that we call them. Um, if you look on the Wikipedia page, it goes into the details. The, the Wikipedia table has a lot of blank entries. This will continue to get more. So let's talk about the first one. 
I'm going to go into how this works a little bit to try and give you an idea of what is going on here. And all these issues, um, they just trick the CPU into reading memory. And they trick, um, the issue is that you can read memory that you don't normally have access to. So you can read memory of other processes. So you can go from one tab in a browser to read another tab in a browser's memory. Or you can jump to another program's memory you can read on some of these. Some of them you can read another virtual machine's memory. And that's where the cloud people got really, really nervous. You can go and read like SSH keys from another virtual machine. You can go read Bitcoin addresses from another, uh, or wallet numbers from another machine. You can do bad things that way. If you have CP or machines where you run trusted code that you know what it is and you don't have other virtual machines, you don't have to worry about these issues. But if you don't, you run in the cloud, you have to worry about them. We had to fix the core kernel for a number of these ones. So variant one, fix the core kernel. And then we had to go through and fix all the drivers. And I'll talk, show you about this for a while. There's a lot more work to be done here. We're lucky in Linux, we have access to all our driver code. Other operating systems are not so lucky. So they've had to impose a much bigger hammer in the core to slow things down and make it go. All of these will slow down your processor. So people are seeing workload dive, depending on your workload. Some are not at all, some very heavy. Do your own testing. I'll talk about that more in a minute. So let's show this. So I get away with showing code in a keynote. Um, this is a normal valid function in the kernel. What we do is we take a user value from user space, we check and see if it's the proper range, and we read some values from it. Normal, provably correct code. So when a CPU sees this, it checks the value, it reads it. It learns over time. So if you give this a perfectly valid range for a couple thousand times through this, through this function, It'll guess. It says, hey, I know this is going to be good. Let's go read this value, and uh, we'll have it ready for when the code actually makes it to this point in time. So it'll speculate. It'll speculate that you're going to get it right. But what happens if you send this, make it right for a lot, number of times, and then you give it a really bad value? What happens is this bad value, you, the CPU will actually go and read some really weird portion of memory that shouldn't and have it ready for you. But you check it and it says, I shouldn't be doing this, it unwinds itself and away as it goes. But that addition, additional um, work of going and reading some part of memory that it shouldn't have is observable. And other, problem, other programs can see that happen. And by seeing that happen, um, you can determine what that memory was. So you can do this in a very slow way. You can read about 2,000 bytes a second, which isn't a lot, but it's enough. You can read the whole of a virtual machine of another virtual machine's memory location, dump it somewhere, and then scan it for SSH keys. So normally, this is perfectly valid code. And it still is perfectly valid code if you just do it like this. But if you happen to do two of these in a row, maybe, oh, ah, Sorry. You do two of these in a row, so you load an array, and then you do another load of array based on that value, the CPU can go way off in the weeds, and then it'll come back and unwind. And when it does way off in the weeds and comes back, that is when bad things happen. And these two accesses of, an, of a speculation and another speculation don't have to be right next to each other. They can be large distances apart in your code. CPUs look-aheads are huge these days. We thought we could get away, oh, like 100 and some bytes difference. No, it's no known range of when these can be. So that can be any point in time. You do something based on one user space value, you jump again. That is the magic happening. So that's what Jan Horn discovered. He verified it was Intel, and it became a big, big problem. So how do we stop this? How do we solve this? Because this is valid code. This is good code that the CPU should be using. So what we have to do is, there's some core kernel changes, but then we have to go back and touch every single driver. Every single time we make an access based on a, a user space a controllable pointer or value to read some memory, we have to say stop. We have to stop the CPU by saying we're going to index this array and don't speculate beyond this point in time. So we have to manually find these locations in the code. And that's a hard thing to do. We have 20 million lines of code in the kernel. People started running some static analysis tools on this. We have some good attempts to try and find these. Um, it's actually really hard to determine where to put these. 
Um, we had one tool that did it. We found 100 different spots in the kernel. Turned out only five were valid. People are working on making these tools better. We have somebody at the Linux Foundation who's funded by the Core Infrastructure Initiative to go through the kernel and fix these bugs right now. He's doing a great job, but it's going to take a while. So every point, we have to say stop to the CPU. So what does this look like? Let's see some more code. There we go. Now I get more C code. So this function, array index speculation, it's a really, we're just determining a mask. We're determining what is the range that this value should be in. We do some magic GCC macros, and we do some masking at the end. But then the interesting thing is this array index mask no speculation. And that function is something that's specific to each different type of processor. So this issue is actually there for all types of processors. Intel, AMD, ARM, PowerPC, S390, MIPS, everything. That's the other unique thing about this bug. It's all pro modern processors have this problem. So this is how it's fixed for x86, 64. All we have to do is do these magic two assembly language instructions and the processor gets confused and stops speculating. I took a long time trying to figure out why these two magic ones are there and what they do, and I could not figure it out. There's a really, really good email thread on the Linux kernel mailing list between Linus and a number of other kernel developers figuring out how to do this. When we fix this, we happen to do it all in public. So you can see how we did this, you can see how we tuned these functions, and you can see how we made things go faster, which is really interesting from a development point of view. We ended up with something very nice, very simple, and very fast compared to what other people had determined in the past. So assembly language in a keynote, yay. So let's go back. So every single function that we do this, we have to add this array index no spec. And when we do that, the CPU stops. It won't speculate beyond that point in time. We read the value and go. Great. But what this means is now the CPU is slower. And we know this. So every time you hit one of these functions, the CPU cannot look ahead in the future. So we will affect your workloads. The interesting thing is newer kernels go faster than older kernels. It's been proven. We do better. We figure things out better. Um, older some workloads, this fix can affect you 5 to 6 percent, maybe 10 percent. But newer kernels are faster. So Facebook published the numbers saying moving from a 4.9 kernel to a 4.14 kernel gave us 6 percent or 5 percent increase in speed just by doing that. But when we had to add these mitigations to it, we lost 4% of speed. So they came out ahead. So they said we're newer kernels were actually 1% faster with, the new, with these fixes. Older kernels got slow. Older kernels slowed down. Some operating systems, some enterprise kernels had to stay at older versions. They got even slower. Um, and then they implemented things differently. I'll go into that in a minute. So when do we fix this? It was publicly announced. January 2nd or 3rd. Um, we had been worried about it. Some of us had known about this for a long time. Uh, it kind of ruined our Christmas vacations. Um, X86 we fixed in January. ARM we finally fixed it in February for just some kernel versions. And I say fix, so all these dates I will be talking about, that's the first time this was fixed. It was not the final fix. We got better over time. We found out better ways to do things. We sped things up. Those original fixes were slow. We've made them faster to see what do we have today. And as proof of this, the fixes are going to keep coming. These fixes are not only needed for, this for the operating system, you have to fix your processor. So processors have microcode or BIOS updates. You have to take those BIOS updates. That's the only way these are going to get fixed. Some of these variants can only be fixed by the BIOS. Some of these variants can only be fixed in the operating system. You have to keep updating your microcode. Intel and ARM have constantly kept updating microcode to newer versions. Different ARM vendors are implementing things in different ways. Qualcomm is infamously doing, fixing this in a different way than other SOC vendors, so they have different microcode updates, different kernel changes. But keep updating, because we get them better. As proof of this, we fixed it again in May. Um, and again, in ARM, we fixed it in the 4.16 and 4.9. I realized when doing this talk, we never went back and fixed those patches in the 4.14 kernel. I'm going to go talk to the ARM developers. And we didn't fix them in anything older than that. Um, you'll notice a lot of 4.4 kernels are not fixed in here. Um, I don't know if they ever will be fixed. So if you're using those kernels, move to a newer one, or use an enterprise kernel. SUSE is actually really good. SUSE developers helped out a lot with this. They have a 4.4 based kernel. 
They fixed these problems in there, but they fixed them in a way that we couldn't take them upstream, which is fine, but it just is a little, little fork in the way things go. Red Hat fixed them also in a different way as well, and their patches didn't apply to upstream either. But um, I will call out SUSE developers are doing a really, really good job in helping us. They, did a, they went above and beyond. So let's talk about variant number two. Variant number two is actually really weird in that it, CPUs can figure out which way the code goes. So you guess which way you're going to jump, and if it gets it right, you're great. If it gets it wrong, you have to unwind things. Well, if you jump one way all the time, and then you want to say, do it again, you can jump off into the weeds, you can figure that out, and again, you can read the data from the kernel. So you can do that, or you can read it from another virtual machine. You can abuse this. This one we had to fix in the compiler, we had to fix in the kernel, and we had to fix in the BIOS. This one fixed all three places. And Mike Linden from, or Matt Linden from Google came up with something called Reptoline. It's like a trampoline. And the way it does is it protects functions, pointers from being abused. And they did that by a way of um, modifying the compiler. So we can rebuild the whole kernel, all the drivers with this. You do that and everything gets fixed. A little tiny performance decrease, but it gets fixed. He published a paper, there's a link to it there. It's a really interesting read. I'm really happy that he did this work, research, published it at the same time that all this came out, and gave it away to the public. It's a really nice work, piece of work. Unfortunately, other operating systems could not implement this because they can't rebuild the world. Um, Microsoft, and well, Apple didn't fix any of this. Microsoft fixed this in a different way because they couldn't rebuild all the drivers, so they had to do some other fun things. But they also modified their compiler. They wrote a really interesting blog post about how they modified Vigil C to affect, fix these problems. But again, Three things had to be fixed here. Again, a very unique security issue that we had to cross different teams in order to talk together and work. Let's talk about Meltdown, maybe? Oh, we fixed it. Here's the dates we fixed this. Um, back in March, we finally got around to it. It took us a while because we had to coordinate with the compiler people. And then, again, we fixed it more and more in newer kernels. We got better. Things sped up. So if you have an older kernel based on those dates, pick a newer one. Your computer your, will go faster. So Meltdown. Meltdown happened at the same time. It's kind of related. It was found by some different people. Um, and it was, we called Spectre Variant number three. And this one just lets you read what's in the kernel from user space. You can't really cross the virtual machine, but it's still a bad thing. Um, many years ago, um, some um, researchers in Austria published a paper called the Kaiser paper and implemented it. was to try and solve some problems where you could guess what the kernel addresses were and they proposed some patches to it. It's called the Kaiser patches. Um, that idea turned out you could solve it the same way, you could solve Meltdown the same way. And what you have to do is every time you enter the kernel or every time you exit the kernel, it'll slow things down by it chunks, it, it moves the memory around in different ways so you physically can't see things. Um, this was a huge, huge way to change the kernel. This, these changes are what made people realize something was coming. We were doing this work in public, one, um, one news organization famously said, all these changes are happening really late in the development cycle, and Linus isn't yelling at anybody. Something's going on. Um, so they knew a hint that something big was happening. It took us about 200 different patches to implement this properly for upstream. Um, for older kernels, we couldn't take those 250 patches. We had to take the Kaiser patches and add it to the kernel. The different old distributions did this in a way. Um, this one really, really will slow down your machine. This one it really affects certain workloads. Um, different distributions and different kernel versions implemented this in different ways, so much so that it's obvious in benchmarks. Kurt Garloff from T-Mobile published a paper showing the same kernel version, different distributions, different, um, and the kernel.org version, how the speed affects different things. Luckily, the kernel we released in the community was the fastest. The, one of the enter major enterprise distros was the slowest by far because they were trying to be very, very safe. Some other enterprise distros were in the middle. So it depends on what you're running is how fast or how bad this is going to be. Uh, benchmark your workloads. Your workloads are going to be very, very specific to this one. This one really hurt a lot of people in the virtual machine space. It's going to make things slow. We're sorry. We don't know how to do it any better. Um, we fixed this. This one we had ready. This one was ready to go by the time it came, was announced. So January 2nd, when it leaked, it leaked about a week early, we had fixes ready. Boom, they went out. Uh, they were fixed in that kernel version. The other stable kernels got them a few days later because I had to have some review. 
um, ARM fixed them much later. Um, the backport patches also, they don't fix things the same way. So um, Andy, one of the core kernel x86 people, and I have said publicly that there are some holes in the old backports. We don't know if those holes are exploitable, but there are holes. We know where they are, um, we, and we'll tell you where they are, but we don't know if that's exploitable enough. To be absolutely sure you're safe from this, use the latest 4.14 kernel or newer. So if you're really worried about this, use a newer kernel and you'll be fine. So um, variant 3A came out, out in March. So now we start getting to research from other people who see this area and say, what other parts of the kernel, what other parts of the processor can be abused? And this one, you abuse the way the system registers are read in a processor. You can read, again, data from the kernel or another virtual machine. But it's solved by the same way we solved number three. So if you have Meltdown secure, um, implemented for your system, you're safe. So nice part of research, kind of interesting. It was already solved. So if you weren't patched for that one reason, you didn't worry about it, here's another reason to worry about it. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about four. Um, processors not only can jump to different places, read memory to different places, they can execute and read in other places. And we're seeing that these CPUs are very, very odd black boxes. They can do things that we don't really realize they can do. So this one, again, you can read the kernel from a data in the kernel or from another virtual machine. This one was a little bit a lot easier to fix. There's some minor code changes in the kernel and some major code changes in the microcode. The kernel's fixed. The microcode has not been released. I will lean on Intel again, publicly say, we're ready, we're ready for you. Um, the Intel has some beta microcode out there. If you're really worried about this, talk to them. They should get it on it. Um, they knew about this, they have plenty of time. We fixed this in x86 these days. I do not think this is a problem in ARM, but I'm not sure. It might be. Um, talk to your ARM vendor if you're really worried. ARM hasn't really said anything about this. Again, we only fixed it back to 4.9, 4.14 and 4.16. Number five, floating point. Now this one gets interesting in that um, we fixed this problem in 2016 accidentally. Um, if you take newer kernels, again I said you, go things, you get things done faster, newer kernels run faster, we also fix problems that might ca be caused. We didn't know about this being a security issue, we knew it was a bad idea, CPUs actually ran slower, so we, we ripped this code out way back in 4.6, 2016. Um, it uses the way the floating point registers can be restored. Uh, the BSD um, developers have this code still in their kernel. I think um, Microsoft had this code still in their kernel. Um, they've ripped it out and replaced it since then. Um, the, the leaked a little bit early because the BSD developers kind of were poking around and found this problem and talked about it publicly um, last week or two weeks ago. Um, it kind of leaked. Um, the full details about this are going to be published today. Uh, the Zen developers also published a really good report on it. Uh, the researchers in Germany are going to publish a report. Um, it was a redacted report. It'll come out today, later today, on how this works. But again, we fixed this a long time ago. So uh, back in May of 2016 in the 4.6 kernel, it, this type of fix was a major architecture change. We never backported it because it didn't look like it was a big issue. But I did for the 4.4 kernel. So um, if you're using these kernels, you're wonderful, you're safe. Um, here's another reason, if you're using a newer kernel, you didn't even have to worry about this one. Um, all was good. If you were using an old kernel, here's another really good reason why you should never use an old kernel. We do fix things. So why this is a big deal? Again, these are CPU bugs. These are taking code that we thought was correct, that was formally approved, and it abuses the CPU in ways to make them incorrect. That's a really radical change in people's mindset. Um, all operating systems were affected. Everybody was hit by this. It wasn't just Linux, it wasn't just Windows, it was OS X, embedded people, everybody got hit. Hypervisors. Um, the good thing about this is now all the kernel developers from the major operating systems are talking. The Linux kernel developers and the Microsoft Windows kernel developers have a back channel. We talk to each other now. We found problems in each other's kernel at times. We point things out. <laughs> so it's a nice side effect. It's brought the, uh, the community of kernel developers together in a way because we all are worried about how CPUs work. Performance is going to decrease. That's a big deal for a lot of people. A lot of cloud, a lot of virtual machine benchmarks suddenly take a nosedive. 
Um, you can claw your way back and get it better. Newer versions of the kernel are getting things better, but it will affect performance. There's nothing we can do about this. Um, this is a totally new class of vulnerabilities. These come out around every couple of years, maybe every 10 years. This is a whole new class of research. It's going to be worked on for a long time from now on. We're going to be living with this for a very, very long time. And we're going to be fixing them for a very long time. Keep updating your kernels. We are going to be keep finding these problems, and we're going to have to keep updating them. And update your bias. So when this first came out, a lot of you saw the rants from Linus in public. I have complained about this in public. The way this was released was very, very unique. And it was treated, as far as I am concerned, very badly. We were notified very, very late in the game. Jan found this in July. Kernel developers, some of us were notified about this in October. It came out in December, end of December, early January. Um, the way they notified us is they notified the companies. So a traditional company, when they find a problem, they're going to talk to other companies because they're used to doing with that. Um, it turns out the majority of the world does not run company-based kernels. The majority of the world runs kernel.org kernels or community-based kernels, Debian. The maj one major, major cloud provider in the top three told me less than 10% of their workload is enterprise kernels. Over 90% is Debian or kernel.org kernels. The world has changed in the past five years. Companies have not realized this. When Intel found this, was notified of this problem, they started dealing with the companies. So they dealt with SUSE individually, they dealt with Red Hat individually, they dealt with other companies individually, and they didn't let the different groups work together. Because all the developers of those companies are actually part of the kernel community. And so they work together and they, they work together, they find out the best way to solve things, they solve them together. We were not allowed to do that for this. Because of that, you'll notice the enterprise distributions implementation are radically different. Red Hat's solution for this is radically different from Oracle's solution for this, is radically different from Canonical's, radically different from SUSE's. SUSE's is actually close to the upstream kernel. Again, those developers did a good job. So that was a big, big deal. That made us really mad. Because the community and the kernel.org kernels were vulnerable really, really late in the game. The major cloud providers who based their systems on the kernel.org kernels were upset. They were, they were caught flat-footed and they were, needed to change really fast. Intel realizes this, they've worked with us on this, and for the future ones that are coming out, they've changed. They now notify us, they're allowing us to talk to each other about this. It's getting better. It's not perfect. We still have some minor complaints, but it is getting better. They have learned. This is why you saw a lot of us really, really grumpy, <laughs> really, really upset in the beginning because we weren't allowed to work on this together. So how do you keep up to date? How do you keep a secure system? Do this. Take all the releases I make. Take all the security patches, all the stable updates. Because, and do not cherry pick your kernels. Don't say, oh look, this fix, I'll take this fix from the stable, this fix from the stable, this fix from the stable, because everybody gets it wrong. I've audited almost everybody's major kernel these days, and the people that try and cherry pick fixes miss, miss things. Just take the whole thing. The community supports the whole batch of patches together. The community will not support if you cherry pick different pitch, pit, fixes. We know this whole thing works together. Take it. There's no reason not to. Using Git, we can merge things easily. Just take the whole thing. Enable the hardening features in your kernel. Every new kernel release has new security features, new ways to protect yourself. Some of these Spectre issues were not, uh, did not affected by these hardening features, but other security bugs are. I've seen loads of very, very famous brand new phones with new, pro new versions of kernels not enabling C or different security issues that cause no performance issues. They just, and so they're open to a whole class of vulnerabilities. Enable those options. They're there for a reason. Do that. Keep updating your major kernel version. If you can move from a 4.4 to 4.6 to 4.14, do it. If your SOC keeps you in an older kernel version, work with them and complain, but move to newer kernel versions because they're faster. Ends up we speed up things. We make things work better. We're not doing these releases just for the heck of it. We make things better. So use the newer kernel version. Again, Facebook publicly said, newer kernel version, no performance loss because they went to a newer kernel version. And update your microcode and your BIOS. They're being released for a good reason. They, again, it costs them a lot of money to do this. Take those updates. They are fixing problems. Again, variant four needs a microcode update. You're going to have to update your, your microcode. You're going to have to update your bias. Do it. So 
I don't mean to be all doom and gloom. It's really easy. Just keep updating. Everything will be fine. Thank you very much.